In this demo, I'll be showing you the new 64-bit version of the Final Effects Complete 6 package for Adobe After Effects CS5. Final Effects Complete is a set of over 100 filters and transitions and includes many well-known particle and edge effects. FEC 6 is the latest version and it has been re-engineered to take full advantage of 64-bit hosts and includes many cool new features and new effects. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these new filters and features in Adobe After Effects. The first thing I want to do is show you some of the new overlay controls that are offered in FEC 6. So you see this tab here, Show Overlay Controls. That's referring to these new circular widgets on screen. And these allow me direct access to certain parameters in the filter. In this case, I'm adjusting the size parameter. I can also adjust the rotation. And I can adjust the very center of the Kaleida effect. And this is all just using these new on-screen controls. Now what's really cool is that not only are these really quick and responsive, but they coexist with the traditional slider controls over here. So I can also use the sliders if I want to without having to uh, disable the on-screen controls. If you want to disable the on-screen controls, it's as easy as just deselecting this checkbox here. And now the filter looks exactly as it did in the previous version. Okay, now you're going to see a lot of these new on-screen controls and the other filters that I'm going to show you today. And as you'll see, they might look a little bit different depending on the filter that is using them. Okay, so new on-screen controls, really cool. Next new feature I want to show you is Beat Reactor. Now, Beat Reactor is a new feature that lets you take audio levels in your timeline and adjust certain parameters with them. So let me show you how that is going to look. I've got the sound down here. You can see the waveform right there. And if I select it here, suddenly I get this nice audio graph on my video. So this is the audio level or volume level for each, uh, spec for each part of the audio spectrum. And if I tell the beat reactor to apply to some parameter, let's say the size of the Kaleida filter, all right, I get this box on the screen. This box represents the area of the audio graph that's going to affect the filter. So if I want the size parameter to be affected by the lower tones in the audio, I'm going to move this box to the base section of the graph. Okay, so now whenever the base changes, the size is going to change with it. Now let me increase that a little bit, and I'll give you a nice RAM preview so you can see what this is doing. Okay, so you can see that the audio levels are causing the size to change uh, directly with them. Now what's cool is that you can actually tell the beat reactor to apply to the filter differently. So maybe I want the effect to have less of a reaction to the music. I can bring this down. I could even go negative to get a reverse reaction. But let's just bring that down to about 50%. And let's take this fall off parameter. And instead of having the parameter go up and down with the music, I'm going to make it build up indefinitely. So it's going to build incrementally with the sound levels. And on top of that, let's add another parameter here. Let's put the rotation into the effect. And let's also have this build up indefinitely. OK, so now I've changed a couple of those things there. I'm going to start the size at 0. So you can still change the starting values for your filter, even though you're using Beat Reactor. You can really get a lot of creative effects with this. Uh, let's take a quick RAM preview of this now and see how that looks. So as you can see, the effect is totally different, even though I'm still just using the same audio and the same parameters. Uh, just to wrap up the whole Beat Reactor thing, let me point out that this is included in many of the filters in FEC. For example, here's the Glow filter. And I'm just going to create another really fast, cool-looking effect without doing much work, just telling the Beat Reactor to use the glow intensity. Now let's take a look at that. So there we have a really nice self-automated effect just using Beat Reactor. Okay, moving on. The next new feature I want to show you is FEC Compare Mode. Now I'm going to use Compare Mode to take this clip here and color correct it so it matches this clip below. And then maybe this one too. So Compare Mode allows me to directly compare two video sources. Now, if I have this filter here, RGB color balance, let me make a really obvious change to it. Okay, so it's all red now. If I turn on compare mode, 
I can let the, look at the clip before and after the effect is applied. And I can you know, go to different portions in the clip to see different areas of the video. And I can use a different compare mode called compare. And this allows me to just use a wipe slider to look at different parts of the video. OK, so I've got the compare mode going on. Now this is nice for some filters being able to compare the same footage to itself, but I want to compare it to what's below the footage. Now check this out. I'm looking at the footage below the clip, but the main clip is still active. So I can adjust the parameters in the filter while I'm still looking at both clips. And now that's a really handy feature of compare mode. So I'm going to keep the blue up, turn the uh, secondary colors back up as well. I'm just going to do a really quick color correction on here, really just a little bit more blue, maybe not that much. Okay, so there's some really quick color correction there. Again, using the on-screen controls to make everything faster. And now I've got these other filters stacked and ready to go for, for a better color matching process. So I'm going to take the blue sky out, and I'm going to increase the tolerance and then change the lightness. Okay, so the sky matches there. And then finally, I'm just going to go into the color balance mode again and bring down the saturation. Also note, the compare mode is still active from the previous filter, and I'm using parameters on a different filter. So compare mode can be applied globally through your filter stack, uh, but then you have to remember to turn it off when you are ready to you know, not use it anymore. So there's a quick color correction to match the first two clips. You know, could be better, but you get the idea. One more feature of compare mode is the ability to compare to any video in your timeline. So let's say I want to look at the bottom track. Well, check it out. Now I'm looking at a totally different video track. I'm bypassing this one altogether without having to disable layers or create composite modes or anything like that. So this is really handy for anyone who has to do any kind of compositing or color correcting work. All right, moving on, we have a new filter called Super Dissolve. And this is a transition that uses different apply modes to create unique dissolve effects. So I'm going to start in this footage of a woman on the beach and go to Las Vegas. So I guess she's dreaming of Las Vegas. Now it is a filter transition, so I can use the uh, widget here. Let me select my track. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I can manually like keyframe the transition between these two clips, or I can set it to be automatic. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we've got this uh, really smooth looking dissolve as the default. But let's go to some of the different apply modes here and make it look different. Okay, so this is what the filter is really all about, being able to change how the transition looks by using different apply modes. Okay, so that is how you would adjust the parameters going into these different settings. Here, you can create subtle or harsh effects. A lot of the presets that ship with the filter um, give you an idea of what you could do with it. So this is kind of like, you know, light and colorful, but there's also like dark and serious. So maybe she had a bad experience in Las Vegas, and that's why it's all gray and evil looking. That's like, that looks like fire now. It's the uh, Bellagio of Flame, which would actually look really cool. But anyway, so I'm um, just messing around with the filter here. Get a lot of cool different looks. And if you're lazy, you can just use the presets, which are already set up for you. OK, the next new filter is another transition, and it's RGB Dissolve. This time, we're going to take this woman and transition her to a different woman on the beach. So it looks like we're going in circles here. So she's dreaming of the beach, and this filter allows you to transition one color out at a time. So how's that going to look? Well, let me select the other clip, and I'll just adjust the widget here. So you can see that as we increase the percent, we go through the different colors. So we start off going through red, and then we go through yellow, and then there's a little bit of blue left. So the way this works, if you view the ease curve here, this is a line representation of the transition that's happening. And if you move these lines, you're moving where the transition happens for that color. So what I've done is I've just delayed the red 
So now red is not the first color to fade out. Now let's see how that looks in action. So if I go through this way, okay, so now you can see it looks more green at first and then comes through with the other colors. All right, you can adjust this filter pretty easily. And again, we ship with several presets, which give you an idea of the kind of effects you can get from it. Okay, moving on to the last new filter, it is Rectangular Scale Wipe. And this can be used as a transition or as a effect. So I'm gonna take this shot of a plane and transition to San Francisco. And if I just locate it here, it is actually in the distort uh, category of effects. So here we are, this one uses a lot of on-screen controls and they're all really fun actually, check this out. Uh, they're really responsive and they you know, make a lot of sense for the parameter that you're adjusting. So there I'm gonna rotate the shape. I can move the whole darn thing around if I want, change the radius. If you were to use this as a transition like I'm about to do, you would animate the radius. And in fact, I can do that using the widget. So check this out, radius, keyframe, and radius out. Okay, and there it is. So it's really convenient, these widgets, I'm telling you. Also, I wanna mention that even though the widgets are enabled now, I can still change the values using sliders. So it's not one or the other, just so you know. Okay, so lots of different preset styles here as well. Um, you can see that the curvature effect can give you some really nifty, like transparency effects here. This one is called glass distortion, appropriately enough. You can even make a more rounded effect. You know, it's rectangular scale white, but it's, it's pretty versatile. You get lots of different looks here. And again, you can rotate them any which way. Okay, so that is rectangular scale wipe. All right, the last new feature I wanna show you is the integration of AE lights. So we have a few filters in FEC that take advantage of this. The first one is Mr. Mercury, one of my favorite filters, and I hope yours too. So here's the standard Mr. Mercury doing its thing. Now, it has a built-in light, which looks fine, but let's say you wanna match it with an AE light. Well, it couldn't be easier. We just added a checkbox that says, used host light, use host lights, and there it is. So now you have all the cool 3D-ness of Mr. Mercury interacting with an AE light, so it blends better with the background. You can see the specular highlights are all matching there. What's cool is that the light properties parameters here also now apply to the AE lights. So you have the same control over lighting you did before, just more options on how to light it. Now here's a cool trick. If you want Mr. Mercury to cast shadows, well, you have two options. You could just make it a 3D layer, but that's going to change how the light looks on the blobs themselves. I personally would want to avoid that. So here's a trick. Just take the layer and duplicate it and then make the lower layer 3D. So that way you're sort of self-masking, but you still get the shadow from the layer underneath. So it's a little trick, but it works perfectly and you'd never know the difference. Okay, the next filter that takes advantage of the AE lights is ball action. So let me just apply that here. And there's a really cool preset I like, swirl at the top. Check out the clip I'm putting it over here. Okay, so we have this really cool Art Beats shot of some uh, time-lapse footage. It's really ominous, it's got some lights going on. Uh, you might have noticed that the balls aren't reacting to the light, but we're gonna use that same cool checkbox and there it is. So now they're dark and brooding, just like the uh, background. And of course, if I move the light around, you can see it updating on the balls there. And now to complete the look, I'm going to put a little bit of animation on the grid, and that should really make it look like it's a swirling vortex going up into space. All right, let's take a quick RAM preview of that. Okay, so there you have some of the new features and new filters in FEC 6 in After Effects CS5. So if you liked what you saw here but want to try it out for yourself first, just go to our website and download a free fully functioning trial version. And that's at BorisFX.com.